Well, hello there, entomologist. Welcome back. This week, we're going to learn all about spiders. And if you were think back to when we first started learning about bugs, we said that spiders are not insects. It says spiders are arachnids. They are not insects. So they both belong to the group of animals called bugs. But arachnids, unlike insects, have eight legs and only two body parts. All right, so if you think back to what we learned about insects, how many legs did insects have? Yeah, they had six, so spiders have eight. And how many body parts did insects have? They had three, remember? Head, thorax, abdomen. Well, spiders only have two. And it says spiders do not have wings or antenna like many insects do. So let's look at the parts of the spider. So their two body parts are called the cephalothorax. That's a big word. A cephalothorax and then an abdomen. So they have an abdomen just like insects, but they're, they don't have a head or a thorax, they have a cephalothorax. And then they have pedipulps. Instead of antennas, they have pedipulps. And then they have eight legs, so four on this side and four on this side. Four and four make eight. And then on the back of their abdomen, they have a special body part called a spinneret. And I bet you you can figure out what they use that spinneret for. Yeah, they use it to spin their webs. So that's a cool body part that spiders have. So that's what makes spiders different from insects. Most people are afraid of spiders. The fear of spiders is called arachnophobia. No need to fear them though. Spiders are actually very helpful. They eat pesky insects that get in our homes and gardens like flies, mosquitoes, and beetles. And without spiders, our homes and even our school would be filled with these bugs. So they're actually a friend because spiders catch all those pesky insects in their webs. There's a cool picture of a web. And they eat them. Otherwise, we'd have bugs or insects everywhere. It says there are over 30,000, that's a big number, different species or kinds of spiders. Some spiders can jump to catch their prey while other spiders spin sticky webs. Most spiders in the US or the United States where we live are not poisonous or harmful to humans. But there are two kinds that are poisonous, the black widow, which is up here, and the brown recluse. So those are the two that are very dangerous, but we don't have them around here. Spider snacks. What do spiders eat? Most spiders eat insects, like flies and mosquitoes, but they can't chew up their prey and swallow it. So instead, they use those pedipulps that we just learned about to inject venom into the insect. This venom turns the inside of the insect into liquid and then the spiders can suck it up. Some very large spiders like this Goliath bird eater eat small animals like lizards and even birds. So some of the bigger spiders eat other things besides insects. So that's what they use those pedipulps for. Really cool, they don't have them, they don't chew. 
So they suck up the liquid. So they use the pedipulps to inject venom into the insect and it turns the insect into liquid and then they suck it up and that's how they eat. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Spider babies. Here's a spider protecting her egg sac. And then when the egg sac hatches, out come baby spiders. And baby spiders are called spiderlings. Spiders are oviparous animals. This means that they lay eggs. A female spider can lay anywhere between two and 1,000 eggs. She wraps them up in her silk to make an egg sac and she guards them until the tiny baby spiderlings exit the egg sac. So if you ever see a white ball on a leaf, or maybe sometimes they even lay them in cracks. I know I found one one time. When I opened up my door, I found it in the crack of my door. So they lay them in places where they think it's safe. And so if you ever see a ball like that, it's a spider egg sac, and there's baby spiders inside waiting to come out. So today I found a big book. It's called The Big Book of Spider Life Cycles. And if you look, there's a really cool picture of a spider. You can even see up close. They have lots of hair on them and big eyes. They have lots of eyes. You can see their pedipulps here. So... What do you think? You think this is going to be fiction or nonfiction? Yeah, I'm thinking nonfiction. It's going to teach us a lot more facts about spiders. So it's written by Sarah Murphy, designed by April Ferry. So remember, when we read nonfiction books, we need to pay attention to these text features. I hope you're doing that while you're reading at home, paying attention to all these features that help us learn what the author is trying to teach us. So let's pay attention to them today while we learn more about spiders. The Big Book of Spider Life Cycles. These are spiders. Spiders come in all sizes from very big to very little. And it says here on the hand, if you put your hand on this page, you can see how big we are because these pictures are true to life size. So these are actually the sizes of the spiders. And you can see some are really little and some are really big. So this is the cobalt blue tarantula, the black widow and the brown recluse, which are the two poisonous ones actually are pretty tiny. The yellow garden spider, the cucumber spider, this one's a golden orb weaver. Looks like that one might be one you see on the water. And look at this big one over here. It shows you here that it's 10 inches long. I am the largest spider in the world. Oh, look, there is a speech bubble. Look at how tiny this one is. You can barely see it. It's a Samoan moss spider. A jumping spider, I've seen those around here. A wasp spider, a garden funnel web spider, a wolf spider. So it says the Goliath bird eater has a leg span of 10 inches. The Samoan moss spider is only 0.1 inches long. So look at the difference between those two. So they come in all sizes from very big to very little. Baby spiders come from eggs. Baby spiders are called spiderlings. Baby spiders look like adults, but they are very small. So how do they grow? It's a good question, but let's look up here because I see some labels. I see a heading. So make sure you pay attention to all those things when you're reading the book. Don't just skip over them says the life cycle. Here's pictures of a garden spider making an egg sac. So the first thing he does is he spins silk from that spinneret. And then he makes the web 
And then he lays the egg, and you can see now here come all the eggs. And then he spins the web around the eggs. And he protects the eggs with the silk and makes the egg sack. So that's pretty cool. And then when they come out, look how little they are. And look how many of them there are. It says, many spiders leave their eggs after laying them, but wolf spiders carry their eggs and spiderlings on their back. And here they zoomed in to show you. There they are carrying them on their back. A spider has a hard outer shell called an exoskeleton. Hmm, some other insects have that. To get bigger, the spider has to get rid of that shell and grow a new one. This is called molting. And some insects did that, didn't they, as they grew in their life cycle. It says here, when a spider begins to molt, a layer of fluid forms between its body and its exoskeleton. So let's see up here in the pictures. Let's read what this label says. It says a spider's joints are on the outside of its body instead of inside like a human's and a spider has seven joints per leg. So his leg, kind of like our elbow is a joint and helps us bend our arm. Well, he, the spider has seven joints in his leg to help him bend his legs. And over here, is how they molt. So it shows up here, here's this part is their body, the yellow part is their body, and then they grow fluid, which is like a liquid, in between their exoskeleton. So the exoskeleton is the black line, and then the, these, this is hair. So they grow a fluid in between their exoskeleton and their body so that they can molt it or shed it. A second exoskeleton starts to grow underneath the layer of fluid. So now you can see here, this is going to be the new skin or the new exoskeleton. Then the spider begins to rub its abdomen. Many spiders flip over onto their backs to do this. So here's a cool picture. They're turning, oh, he's turning over on his back and they rub their abdomen. That must help them to get their old skin off. The spider's heart starts to beat faster. This makes its body expand, which stretches the old exoskeleton. So up here you can see his heart beating very fast and it says a tarantula's heart is in its abdomen. Next, the spider's muscles vibrate and the vibrations crack the old exoskeleton. So up here you can now see when he vibrates his muscles, the old exoskeleton starts to fall off. The spider crawls out of its old exoskeleton and the new exoskeleton looks white until it hardens. So there is a newly molted spider with his old skeleton left up here. And here's another picture on a web. All spiders have hair on their exoskeletons. The hair has to grow back every time a spider molts because a spider cannot survive without hair. So listen to that cool fact. It says up here, a spider can hear, taste, smell, and feel with its hair. So he can't survive without that hair growing back. So that's really cool. Almost all of his senses are used with his hair. Spiders will molt many times before they become full-sized adults. Some adult spiders molt about once a year. So that's really cool. So up here it shows adulthood. 
So here's the adult laying the egg. And out come the spiderlings. And then here's what we call the adolescent. Hasn't grown into the full adult yet because look down here. It has to grow much bigger. It has to molt. One, two, this one molted three times before it turned into the adult. And here's a spider molting cycle. We just learned about all these stages. So remember how he starts to shed and grows the liquid under in between the exoskeleton and his uh, the new one? And then he turns on his belly and then he does muscles expand and his heart starts beating faster and he starts shedding it. And then here he is with a new skin that's kind of white until he turns into the, into the new skin. And then the cycle starts over again. And I liked this last page because it kind of compares a spider to a human because humans grow Look, we don't start out as an adult. We have a lot of growing to do to turn into the adult. But how do we do it? It says babies have more bones when they are born than adults do. And as we grow, some of our bones fuse together. So humans have skeletons on the inside. So we have our bones are called skeletons, not exoskeletons. And our bones grow longer as we get older. So we don't shed our skin, our bones just grow. And it says here, sometimes they even fuse together and make bigger bones. That's how we get bigger. So that's pretty cool. They compared spiders to humans. So now let's think about all the facts that we learned. And remember when we read nonfiction books, we like to use those graphic organizers to help us with all the information we learn. So here I took a Venn diagram. Remember a Venn diagram is when you take two circles and hook them together and in the middle you talk about how the, the two things you're comparing are the same. And then on the outside you talk about how the two things are different. So here I took my Venn diagram and I compared spiders versus insects because we spent lots of time, a few weeks, learning all about all insects and now we're going to spend time learning about spiders. So how are they the same? How are they different? Well, let's talk about how they're the same first, how they're in the middle. They're both born from eggs, right? They both molt because they both shed their exoskeletons and they both have abdomens and they both have babies. But now how are they different? Well, spiders have eight legs. Insects only have six. Spiders have two body parts. The insects have three body parts. The spiders have petty pulps. The insects had antennas. And the spiders have spinnerets. And that's kind of how they get around. They spin their webs or sometimes they just hang from their spin and that help for from their web or their silk. And that's how they get from place to place. Well, insects have wings and that's how they get from place to place. So that's pretty cool. And then I also, I turned it over on the back and made another one because I thought the book did a really good job of comparing spiders to humans. And so I made another Venn diagram to compare spiders to humans. So let's see, how are we the same? Well, we both have a life cycle, we both grow, and we both eat to stay healthy. But we're very different. Spiders are born from an egg. Humans are born from our moms. Spiders have an exoskeleton. Humans have a skeleton. Spiders molt when they grow and change. We have bones that grow longer that help us to get bigger. And spiders eat bugs and we eat food to stay healthy. So those are some, that's something cool you can do. You can take 
a Venn diagram and compare two things. So I encourage you, if you want to print it off, to do that. Another thing I encourage you to print off that's attached to this lesson is this picture of a spider where you have to label it. Because today we learned that a spider has different body parts than insects. So let's take a look at how a spider is different from an insect. If you look at the arrows, the arrows are pointing to the body parts. Okay, so you could write the names inside the box or I cut them off at the bottom and you could glue them into the boxes. So this one says legs. Um, where would the legs be? Yeah, these would be the legs up here. And remember how many legs a spider has? Eight, yeah, four and four, four on each side. This one says pedipulps. Do you remember what pedipulps are? Yeah, those are the things that look like antennas on the front of spiders, but they use them to suck up the fluid. Remember, they put the venom inside the bug and it turns it into liquid and then that's how they eat it. They suck up the liquid because they can't chew. And this one says abdomen, and that was something that was the same about spiders and insects. They both had an abdomen, which the abdomen is the back part of the body. I actually think that this arrow is pointing to the abdomen, so we might wanna put that one up there because you can see the arrow pointing there. And then this one says spinnerets. So that was a new body part that insects don't have. And we said that the spinneret was located on the back of the abdomen. Remember, that's how they spin their webs from their spinneret. So you can see the arrows pointing to where it is. And then the last word is that long word, cephalothorax. And that was that other new body part Remember that spiders only have two body parts, the cephalothorax, which is this front body part, and the abdomen. So now we labeled the parts of a spider. So I encourage you to do that today. And then the last page that's attached that you could print off is the life cycle of the spider. And our big book really walked us through how a spider changes into an adult. So I encourage you to print this off your words are up here at the top. You could write them underneath and then draw a picture to illustrate the life cycle of the spider. So I encourage you to do that today as well. So have fun and we'll be back again with some more interesting things about spiders.